So uh, for the last, I guess, uh, 25 or 30 minutes, uh, I only give you some more slides. I know we have already seen too many PowerPoint slides today. And that's why we also thought it's probably a good idea to do some uh, little, not, not really hands-on, but maybe we can actually also do it hands-on, maybe also later on, but uh, at least a kind of practical life measurement with the ERT to demonstrate you how you attach the belt and uh, how quickly you actually can start with the ERT measurements if everything goes right. And we hope, of course, that uh, things are going right in the next few minutes. But uh, before we do that, um, you know, when we introduced uh, electrical impedance tomography as a medical product three years ago, I thought I was so proud and so relaxed because I knew we have solved all the technical issues with that and uh, I was expecting that uh, all the users of the new technology would produce uh, these kind of images. But I had to find out the hard way that uh, sometimes the images uh, looked slightly different. Yeah. So one, one morning I found in my email this image and uh, the doctor told me, well, my night shift was so scared about uh, what was presented on our device. <laughs> and uh, because I received more and more of these images, uh, I uh, thought uh, it's, it's good to let people know what is actually causing these kind of uh, patterns, which has not very much to do with the ventilation. And it took, that did not uh, take us a very long time to find out that this is actually uh, related to the position of the electrode belt. So I just want to give you a little bit I, I, an idea how a different level of the belt position will impair or at least uh, affect the, the ERT images. So according to our recommendations, uh, we say uh, uh, the belt should be placed uh, in the constant space 4 to 6, which are already allows a fairly broad range uh, where exactly to put the belt. And in such an individual here, uh, it was, would not be really a big issue to put the belt like that. Even at intercostal space uh, 6, I believe you would uh, just, uh, just uh, capture a little bit from the mediastinum. So everything should be fine. One thing uh, which a CD or a chest X-ray makes already clear is you can't really measure directly the apical part of the lungs with ERT, unless you put the belt around the shoulders. But then, of course, it's really hard to compare this data with uh, the normal positioning of the belt around the thorax. So what, what we have done is we have created a series where we have uh, put the belt as high as we could under the armpit, and then stepwise, centimeter by centimeter, we went down a bit. And then uh, we could also, that was a thesis uh, somebody wrote at Draga, we could also create this kind of three-dimensional images. And then you, here's a mediastinum located, that is displayed quite nicely, but you can also say that, see, that of course this image is kind of cut off because the missing remaining slice that would be required to capture the entire line. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are capturing a lens-shaped volume. It's really hard to say how much percentage of the anterior lung we are actually capturing. It's, uh, for example, depending on the dimension of the chest and also on, probably also on the conductivity. So uh, it's, it's, uh, some, this, this information will remain somehow blurry. We can't precisely say how much uh, we uh, will capture. But you can imagine if this dimension here is maybe uh, 20 centimeters in a healthy uh, in an adult, and our belt is already like four centimeters thick, so we should probably assume that we can capture at least 20-30% uh, with one single image. If you put the belt very high, directly under the armpits, in very many patients the metastinum is not uh, le located in the electrode plane, which means uh, because of the relatively low spatial resolution, you cannot really distinguish precisely anymore between the left lung and the right lung. And uh, a disadvantage could also be that uh, in, the, in the upper part of the lung, in the, apic uh, the apical part, uh, uh, there 
the beginning of uh, the recruitment is probably not so easily to be seen. However, even worse, if you go down, if, like I will display in the next images, uh, if the belt is placed too low, and that could be in some females, especially the ones with the big bellies, if you put the belt below the breast, you could already come into the diaphragmatic position. And that would mean that you are getting a mixture of a diaphragmatic movement and true ventilation. And then in these kind of cases, it's really hard to interpret the images. And uh, the breast, for example, also on males, the nipples are not necessarily the best uh, landmarks how to, how to apply the belt. For example, in this uh, patient, you could have attached here. Here you actually can see how a belt looks like uh, on the chest X-ray. And if in this patient you have, you would be able to position the belt right under the breast. In this patient, you would see that uh, you would already get uh, big artifacts due to diaphragmatic movement in the images. So, especially in those patients where, which might have an elevated diaphragmatic position, you have to be cautious and uh, if you have some doubts, rather put the belt uh, one, two centimeters higher than in this very low position. Just to give you just a series before we do the life measurements uh, on the effects. So this was, uh, first of all, I have to say, the ERT images are somehow comparable. However, it was not the same individual like the CT scan and the corresponding AP projection here, again, with the belt displayed. But if you have the CT scan at intercostal space 4, you already see some mediastinum here in between. And you see the ERT image, which looks properly. And there's nothing uh, to be worried about. And uh, also important in this uh, subject, we also recorded the tidal volume and the ratio between the tidal variation, which is a change of impedance, and the tidal volume was 5.4. If you then uh, magnify the color scheme, you can, however, see in the middle here that you see some little purple spots in the images. That's always caused, I will come to that point as a second part, that's always caused when a fluid is located next to a ventilated lung tissue. If you go further down to intercostal space 5, still the ERT image looks quite nice. When you again magnify the colors, you can see that this space is getting a little bit uh, larger which makes sense because if you see the heart, the mediastinum is uh, located like a triangle on the diaphragm. So the lower you go, the larger will be the space which is uh, where the mediastinum is contained. That can of course also be seen, that's equal to the CT scan. <coughs> now if you go uh, to intercostal space 6, you can already see that uh, the ratio here goes down between the tidal volume and the tidal variation because of the fact that this area is actually getting even larger. So of course when, when you have low ventilation taking place and these purple spots are actually also showing a kind of phase opposition then uh, which is subtracted from the ventilation signal then this ratio is getting lower. So especially if you do some or if you intend to do some peak changes and you might have attached the belt during a high peep level, but then you go down. Then it might be that uh, because the peep acts on the, also changes the distance from the diaphragm to the belt, and if you're too low to that, then this can be a little bit misleading. And that is something that I believe uh, very many people also, even the, some ERT researchers, have not been aware about. That's why I decided to demonstrate you this. Okay, and if you're getting uh, even uh, into this diaphragmatic position, then you see already around the ventilated areas lots of these purple spots, which again are caused by diaphragmatic movement rather than ventilation. In the worst case, and that is close to the image I showed you on the first slide, was a scary movie. In the, in the worst case, it's done like this. Uh, 
this is what you definitely need to avoid. And that is basically also when you record the volume waveform, then you can see that uh, all these signals here now are completely inverted against the ventilation. So that is actually <laughs> happening if you put the belt almost in an abdominal position, just to let you know. Here again, kind of a summary of that uh, page, and uh, I don't know if you have already got uh, this ERT booklet. Uh, this image is also displayed in the ERT booklet because I believe it's very important for the clinical use to know about these conditions.